uh, can we start now yes yes we can start now. yes okay good morning uh, or else is someone joining yes yes we will start now yes okay good morning all this is ajinkya patil here from club sinking.gck i warmly welcome our guest dr krishnath patil sir welcome sir thank you i am very thankful to you sir that uh, from directly from usa uh, you have joined with us and uh, we are so pleased that the string is still attached between you and our college after so many years Yes, thank you thank you yes we will be the next uh, dr sk patil sir is with us i welcome you sir uh, so i the flow is initially our guest will uh, deliver a speech after that we uh, interview session will be taken uh, by us after that uh, students can uh, flow their questions through the interaction session and after this we will wrap up the session and really guys you going to find the treasure of experience knowledge and uh, the guidance from the sir so uh, i now hello yeah we can hear you yes you are audible yes continue sir okay so i will now briefly introduce our guest uh, no no i should say our gck family member Dr. Mr. Uh, Dr. Krishnath Patil sir is currently working in Siemens Power Technologies International in New York, USA. He is graduated from our college in the year 1989 and pursued M.Tech in IIT Kanpur. He travelled to London for completing his PhD in power system in University of Western Ontario. As knowledge is a key of many opportunities, sir have. done remarkable one work in many projects he was a part of the team that developed power system simulator for engineers this program is used over 100 countries by uh, engineering faculties and uh, the electrical utilities he has given power system training to engineers in usa canada finland and some more countries along with it it has he has uh, contributed in team which worked uh, to analyze the effect of geomagnetic disturbance on earth and tools for database management of large electrical utility grids before this sir also worked in ontario power generation toronto in canada it's not all guys sir was the senior member of ieee and its power and energy society he was the task force leader for analyzing the effect of dc bias on power transformers really what an amazing journey guys uh, such a pride for all of us so without further further stretching your curiosity i request mr uh, dr krishnath patil sir to share his valuable experience with us sir please thank you Okay. Hi. As was introduced by Ajink, I I am graduate of uh, uh, College of Engineering Karad. Uh, I graduated in 1989, and I basically did a lot of other stuff after that. So I first I would like to give my thanks to. Dr. S. K. Patil, your dean, for providing me this opportunity to really talk to you all, and also Professor Kumar Wad and Shubham, who really worked to make this happen. They they are the I I really not done anything just than just talking today, and they were the one who organized and arranged and made all this technology possible. So thank you, thank you all, and. you are attending today taking your time out from saturday and attending this i hope this discussion will be helpful in some sense and also <clears throat> give some encouragement for your careers and whatever you pursue in your life that's 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 the ultimate goal of everyone right to be happy and to be successful so hopefully uh, some of the things which i did which i followed 
will you give you some guidance on how things work in real world. <clears throat> so just to give my brief uh, uh, background, I basically uh, grew up in a small village in Kolhapur district. And from there, I did my primary and secondary school. And one of the really important thing, which I really started and started believing in is uh, teachers. They really, uh, right from the beginning, in my both primary school and high school, uh, some of the teachers, I still remember, and they are the one who really nurtured my education skills or curiosity and really helped me to understand a lot of stuff. So I really, really big thank you to all of them who really made me what I am today. So a lot of teachers really helped, and that's what uh, you really all have to really understand that teachers are the, the source uh, because of which we are standing on. So I really, really thank to all of those teachers who really have helped me to grow at what I am today. <clears throat> and after high school, I went to uh, Government Polytechnic, uh, Kolhapur. There I did my diploma. And the only reason I went to a diploma after 10th grade was because there are some other people in my village who had done that and they had basically got a job. So that was the motive to go to vocational school so that you can get a job after after finishing the school, right? So I finished that and <clears throat> even during the, uh, the polytechnic years, yeah, uh, what I really, really remember is uh, really approaching a lot of teachers, uh, professors there and really asking my questions and really, and once, once you find that uh, some students are really interested to learn more. The UN teachers will really open up and they really not only help you, but they will really explore even more. So that's what I really had understood right then that uh, even in uh, polytechnic, polytechnic years, one of my applied mechanics teacher, Professor Despande, or my math teacher, uh, Tagare Madam, they really helped me to really move from my non-Marathi, uh, non-English background, which I studied in uh, Marathi, to basically move up to English background in, in diploma. They really helped me to understand, to learn the new concepts in mathematics and applied mechanics, which were really hard subjects to understand then. So, so I did, I did uh, owe a lot, of, a lot of gratitude to those teachers. <clears throat> and after, after diploma, I, I, I realized that uh, diploma, uh, diploma is good, you can really get a job, but then uh, once you get into the job, there is a possibility that you may not really grow much into the job. Uh, so that's why I decided to go for engineering degree. And fortunately for me, uh, after the diploma, I could get into Government College of Engineering Karad, Karad directed to the second year. And that's where basically I was in Karad for three years from uh, 1986 <clears throat> to 89, three years and you were dean. Dr. S.K. Patil was my batchmate at that time, and we were good friends then, and we are still good friends, so we keep in touch. Uh, <clears throat> and this is the one basically who approached and asked me to come and give the lecture today. Uh, and <clears throat> once I, I, I basically went to Karad and really had a really good, good memories of a lot of good friends. We're still good friends. We did a lot of, lot of different stuff in. Uh, in Karad, like I, I still remember going and swimming in the Krishna River, or few times we went all the way to Sajjan on a bicycle trip. So they're, they're, those are really good memories. I still remember those and I really cherish. And once I finished my um, um, bachelor's degree, which will be a B, I really, if I, had, I, I was looking for a job, if I had really got a job and really say, let's say really, really good company. I may, may may not have even gone further, but fortunately for me, I I I did not get a job right after my college. So I, I got in and I had even the gate exam, that uh, uh, entrance exam for to IITs. And I, I could get into one of the IITs uh, right after the engineering. So I chose to go there rather than to 
uh, search more for the job and look for the job. So, and once I went to IIT Kanpur, that was really like eye-opening, really eye-opening in the sense that the exposure you get in IIT, like there is a, there is like a, there's no comparison between the, the, the resources available in IIT and the resources available at that time in Karat, okay, college engineering Karat. So even though it was government, but it was barely, uh, barely uh, minimum things, right? Every, every, if you go to any lab, there's just enough, right? Basically, uh, the, the library you go to, there's just enough things. But in uh, in Kanpur, like uh, it was really, it's a like see difference, really, really big change. And lot, not only the resources or the, the people around you are very different. Like when you are in studying in Karad, you're basically surrounded by people, mostly uh, you are neighbors basically, even though I'm, I'm from Kolapur, there'll be people from Karad. So literally most of them are from Maharashtra. So, so most of our backgrounds were similar. But when you went to Kanpur, like you, you see people from everywhere, right? So you have lots of, uh, <clears throat> friends from all other states. And then not only friends who are from other states, but their exposure to different things are very different. Like uh, I'm being from a farmer's, uh, uh, farmer's family. I had really zero exposure to a lot of outside world. But when I went to Kanpur, really this exposure to the thing like people going to abroad or coming from abroad and studying or uh, taking different vacations or studying different things, not only like electrical engineering, but doing a lot of other stuff. So, <clears throat> so when we were in Karad, we didn't have any computers. But when we went to Kanpur, basically we we had a computer. So that's that's uh, uh, that's that's the difference. That kind of resources available in then in those, and that really <clears throat> not only uh, exposed me to what is available outside your what you are studying now. Uh, so what is what is possible and what what can be done further, right? So a lot of my faculty members were uh, studied abroad and basically coming back to India and teaching there. So that's 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 basically gave me gave me an idea of okay, someone like me can even do that. So we can go and study abroad. So after after the after the graduation, I I basically after the M Tech. I basically took a job in BHL because the <clears throat> needed money too, right? So you can just keep studying. So I once I did job in BHL, job was really good, very interesting job in BHL. Like I always, I always found a job which are which which are very technologically challenging. Really not you can you learn a lot of stuff on on the job too. So the job was really good in BHL. We basically went to different. Uh, companies and did uh, power system analysis stuff. So basically doing consulting and designing stuff. So it was an interesting job, but still after uh, uh, three, four years, basically it's kind of a um, uh, jobs uh, prospect or job growth it was okay. You could, you could stay in beach or retire comfortably, but then I really wanted to go and study abroad. So I said, I, I was basically tried to go abroad and basically fortunately for me, I got a, um, admission to University of Western Ontario, Canada, and that too with a full scholarship. So that was really easy decision for me to really just jump the ship and uh, quit the job and go. So that was, <clears throat> and once once you are in basically outside India, like they're still so, dif so different compared to what I had seen or experienced. So, so in in Canada, it was really good. it's a good life, good good studying, a lot of exposure to a lot of lot of stuff. I did a lot of uh, good things in my PhD work. Even I during my PhD, when I studied, I taught one undergraduate course. It was it was a good good and broad experience <clears throat> to uh, live uh, live in Canada and study in Canada. And after studying there for for three uh, three and a half years, I finished my PhD and then. Uh, after PhD, basically, I took a job in Ontario Power Generation, which is basically uh, one of the one of the biggest utility, one of the utilities, our main generation utility in Ontario, which is a, a state in Canada at that time. Uh, <clears throat> and that job was basically I I was uh, visiting nuclear different nuclear stations and doing a lot of uh, uh, equipment designs and things like that. So it's a it's a very interesting job, 
but uh, my 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 uh, my heart was not in doing the, the job like uh, eating station right what we, what kind of job we do basically you maintain the equipment or you basically tweak it here and there right? a little bit so that's how that's kind of a uh, op operational maintenance kind of job that's that's what we do so i really was interested to do something different so that's when i i decided to uh, switch to a, a different company called power technologies international which is which is in uh, which is based in uh, uh, Schenectady, New York, USA. And Schenectady is the place where uh, almost like a lot of inventions from this place have been used all across the globe. It is, it is, it is that uh, uh, technologically important uh, uh, place this is. Like MRI machines were basically invented in this place. The first electricity was started here in uh, <clears throat> In Schenectady, the first air break was invented by uh, George Westinghouse in Schenectady. So there's a lot of lot of uh, big scientific big breakthroughs and equipment have been really invented in uh, in, in Schenectady, and <clears throat> and so this is, Schenectady is still a, a, a small town, and I'm 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 here since 2004. And I'm, I'm really happy with what I'm, what I do, and so it's the bottom line is, irrespective of what kind of a job we do, are, are you really happy? Are you really satisfying? Does the job meet your uh, requirements? Requirements to help you understand the subject matters are really helping others to do a lot of stuff, right? So that and if it, does that give you satisfaction? If if the answer to that is yes, then yes. Uh, then yes, right. So I am I am really doing a lot of really uh, cool cool things in the area which I work. For example, the the power system simulation software we develop that literally is the benchmark uh, software which all other software programs they use basically compare the results against. It is really 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 fast. So even if you have a uh, buses which are like uh, Hundred thousands of buses, basically. Buses means it's kind of a node, right? Like Karad is one bus, for example. Satara is another bus. If you have nodes like that, and if you have hundred thousands like that, this program can really run the power flow in a few seconds, less than a second. So it is really that fast. So it's really the, the software tools we really develop. They're really, really hard, are really innovative, and do a lot of good work. So a lot of things which we build now really are used everywhere everywhere in the united states everywhere in uh, lots of lots of places in europe or almost like uh, uh, 40 50 percent of the market of power system analysis is basically is done by the tools we develop and especially the tools which i have developed for example like my latest research which is in uh, uh, determining the or calculating the effect of solar storms on electrical power transmission, right? So if there is a similar to earthqu uh, earthquakes on the ground, right? Here in, on the earth, there are earthquakes, uh, hurricanes on the solar surface. And if there is a something, some event like that, so there is a millions of tons of uh, solar mass, which is really like highly charged particles, which are thrown towards earth direction. Then, then what happens is, there could be an induced voltage in the transmission lines, and that that induced voltage can cause a lot of lot of problems. And they this is a known 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 fact for the last thirty years. There's a lot of research being done on this. So now we are I basically developed tools to quantify this and to analyze this. So in in the United States now, engineers or uh, power system operators can really. Uh, calculate this effect in uh, in real time now. So basically, they can see the event and they know the event, and they can really see the effect of it on their grid. So that's how these tools are getting used. And here, I get an opportunity to go and teach uh, power system courses to a lot of engineers now all across the globe. Actually, really, we go and teach to people everywhere. So I've been to. Uh, Austria, I've been to Saudi Arabia, to Dubai, I've been to Finland, lots of places where I go and teach the teach the power system courses. So 
So I personally am really happy what I do. And I'm really happy, not because uh, uh, it's just to uh, help my ego, but I, I am happy because this, these two tools are really getting used and they're really used uh, to solve the everyday problems. So even in, uh, in India, PSSC is one of the main, uh, main power system tool. Uh, almost all state electricity boards use, uh, or low, low dispatch centers they use. They basically, they do a one day ahead planning. Or they, they do uh, uh, future, future planning of their grid. It's done through the, the analysis done in PSSC. So we, we, we have a tools which are really very useful and effective. And that's why it really gives me very immense satisfaction of the work I do and I contribute to uh, help the society in addition to pay my bills. <clears throat> so that's, that's, that's my background as, as an academic. So, and I live here in uh, uh, Schenectady uh, since 2004. I have my wife and my daughter who is in uh, 10th grade now. <clears throat> In addition to outside of my work, basically, I am I am I am happy to happy to say that I really have kept myself really fit all all these years, and I basically during uh, the place where we live, right, the temperature is ranges from almost like uh, minus thirty degrees Celsius to uh, 35 degrees Celsius in summertime. So this really was change. And so I, even in all these uh, temperature changes, I still keep run outside. So as I've seen, I've been running outside a long time and I, I, I do lots of bicycle. I, we go hiking, we go, I learn to ski here when I, when in the winter time to spend time. So I, I do keep myself uh, busy as well as entertained, as well as fit, uh, and all the things which I do, <clears throat> I have run, I have run up to five marathons, 42 kilometers, uh, in and uh, I run uh, to up to five marathons and so many half marathons, which are 21 kilometers. And so that's 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 in nutshell what I what I do. And <clears throat> let me see if I have anything to say. So the reason I uh, reason I gave this uh, uh, topic, right? I said uh, uh, when Soham was asking me give me a topic, I really didn't understand what exactly that really means. But then I thought through, and then the when uh, Dr. Skepatil and they said what exactly this discussion is about. Initially, I was thinking about like kind of uh, when we give lectures here, we really give a specific. Uh, technical lectures. I thought it is something like that only for electrical engineering students. But then when I realized that it is really not for just for electrical engineering students, but general in generic students, then I thought of a topic would be like uh, hard, like what the topic I said was hard work to is a path to success, right? And if you really see all the all the things which I really did, and I really truly believe that uh, there is no substitute for hard work. The only way you can really success is hard work, right? So you would have you would have you would have heard many people say that there's no silver bullet, right, for any problem. So similarly, there are no single path for success, right? I am success because I done a lot of education and I, I, right. I, that's why, I, and because of education, I'm successful today, right? But there are people who really start a small company and they're successful because of that, right? So there is no one way for success. But the only way to success is through the hard work. So if I, I did my education only through the hard work, the person, the other person who started the company, he really toiled to make that company successful. So there is really no substitute for hard work. And at the, the stage you are, you, you people are in, you are in third, fourth year of your engineering, engineering college, right? So the only way you can really be successful is you really have to decide how do you really want to see yourself, right? You want to see yourself to be really successful. The only way you can really do at this time is really work hard. Work hard is basically do your exams well, you prepare well, you do well. You do right now, like in addition to your 
I'm sure a lot of companies that look not just your your uh, um, college uh, college mark sheets. Probably they also look for what else you did, right? Probably Soham is doing your your alumni connection website. Right? Something similarly, you probably everybody must be doing something. So those things will really count to differentiate you from others, right? In, our, in addition to doing your regular uh, work, if you are doing something different, that means you have to work even more, right? So that's 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 the idea. Hard and <clears throat> And once you achieve something, one one stage, right? The way I did, I I initially started going for diploma to get a job after a diploma, but then I changed my position, saying that no, I think I did my diploma now, but I really don't want to do job. I really want to go to engineering, right? So I changed my position, I changed my ex expectation to study more, right? That's why basically I studied even more and more. That's that's so once you achieve something, you don't really want. It, if you're happy what you're doing and really you're content what you're doing, that's fine. But if you really want to be see yourself more, so you really don't tend to stop there. You have to keep keep looking forward and keep keep changing your goalposts, right? And once you change the goalpost, that means you, you really have to work even harder to achieve that further step, right? So that that is the only way you can you can you can see yourself to be successful. So if I look back in my life. Right. I think I did pretty good, uh, and I did pretty good only not because of my somebody's blessings, but because of uh, sheer hard work I put in, or uh, and definitely a lot of friends, a lot of teachers, a lot of professor definitely helped me and guided me to to where am I today, and I really thank for all of them. That's 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 my uh, talk. If you have any any other questions or anything you can you can discuss or talk is that is that good yes sir it's yes. It's, it's great actually uh, see guys the small he started from the small village in kolapur and now we, as you can see he across the uh, sea to london usa finland saudi arabia and much more many more countries as it said that uh, the circumstances from where we have born, it's it's not really doesn't matter, but the achievement we made after that, it's the way of the life. Uh, so, sir, we are so pleased to uh, witness of this such a great journey of yours. And uh, now we will move to our next session, interview session. Uh, I will hand over the session to Amrut and Arpita. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Azinka. Thank you, Azinka. Hello, everyone. I'm Amrita Kumbar from ESI Electrical. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, sir, for just such a great talk. Uh, it was really worth to note. Uh, so uh, now, with your permission, we can start the interview session. Sure. Yeah, so thank you, sir. So my first question for you uh, is, uh, after working in Bharat Heavy Electric, the decision to move abroad uh, looks extraordinary. So can you please tell us on what basis did you decide to move abroad? Uh, as I, I just alluded a little bit in my talk, which was once I I was in when when I was in Kanpur, right? So did you really see the the, the difference between uh, the the crowd or difference in Kanpur and the people you see a see a crowd come across, right? So I see a lot of faculty members who came from abroad and basically they even suggested why don't I go to go abroad and study right so that is that was that was one of the one of the factor motivation factor and also I, I I didn't really have a kind of a financial backing I could really go on my own and like decide and just go so then I was basically uh, waiting for the right opportunity so I I keep I kept applying to different universities many times. I applied in Australia, Australia. I applied in New Zealand. I applied in Canada, right? And uh, once when I get an opportunity to study in Western Ontario with a full scholarship, that was the that basically was the driving factor for me to go and study abroad. So fortunately, I was still unmarried or really like. Uh, 
uh, even though we, we come from a small family, I didn't really have a, a compulsory financial obligations that I really had to work and support them. My brothers were really kind enough to let me go and do whatever I want. So that really uh, helped me to, to really decide and decide my own path. My, my family definitely really did not burden me with their responsibilities. Yeah, they, they always said, you do whatever you want, and but uh, make sure you do it right. That's the only that's the only thing they, they always suggested. Go go and do whatever you want, but do it right. Do it, just do it honestly and ready with the full dedication. Yes, sir, surely. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Arpita Dake from SY Electrical. Yes, really, the decision you had taken was really great. So moving to the next question. Sir, can you tell us actually in which field you paid more attention in power system during your PhD? In my PhD, I, I all my education is mostly in in power systems. After like we had few key courses in even in Karad in power systems, power system analysis by Professor Khabragade. And then once I went to Kanpur, it was everything I did was in power system. Most of the courses. I didn't con uh, power system. So when I went to uh, London, that was mainly to do uh, uh, basically further research in power systems. And uh, in that, uh, during my PhD, basically I, I I basically did a research on dynamic compensation of power system. What that really means is when there is a there is a fault in the power system, right? So we really want to keep the the voltage profile right so that you don't there is no uh, what they call is a shutdown right uh, there is no outages in order to make that happen you really have to support the reactive power so basically you have to push the additional reactive power instantly and in a controlled manner and this is the basically device basically we call a binary multi-level voltage source inverter which basically uh, will support that reactive power dynamically during the disturbances, that was that was my research topic during my PhD. So, uh, the anything if you, if you guys really see that uh, you think uh, internet is the uh, uh, really the all connected all the time, that is really not true. It is the electrical system or electrical power system that is really connected all the time, twenty four hours, never really fails when it. At least here in, like, say, in the United States, the power goes only when there is a storm, when there is a, when there is a physically line breaks because of the tree falls on the line, right? So otherwise, it is always on 24, so 24 hours. So even though you are with all these upgrades and all the technological improvement, even the power system network is fully synced and constantly on all the time. So and, and in order to make that happen in order to make this power system work the way it is. So, because you cannot really store the, if you generate a power, it has to be consumed. There's really not many devices yet to which can store the power, like batteries, right? There are not big enough batteries which can store the power. So whatever you generate, it has to be consumed. So when we have a 40, watt, 40 watts bulb, then you have to generate 40 watts. That's how the power system works. So, and then if you, if you consider India, right? How many there are like gigawatts of generation, right? And it is going from thousands of miles of lines, kilometers of uh, transmission lines. In order to make that happen, the, 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 the controls, and, uh, controls and dynamics and power systems are very intricate and really well balanced. The way like our human body, right? If there's a little, uh, little uh, fever, rather we feel, uh, we feel sick, right? Even if it is like a, from 38 degrees to 39 degrees, we really see the difference, right? We feel sick. Exactly like that power system, when there is some disturbance, it has to be mitigated instantly. So if there is a fault, it has to be cleared and during, and during the fault, whatever the additional requirement needs to be supplied. And that is what the, the dynamic uh, power, uh, reactive power support does. Yes, sir. Uh, absolutely. Uh, thank you for the information. Uh, as a student, uh, it was really relevant and necessary for uh, us. So now uh, moving on to our next question. 
uh, what do you think about startups? Uh, which startup would give progressive improvement uh, for today's generation? Startups, I think if we really look at the, and I, I, uh, the, any startup, right? For example, generally the nimble startups, which are really small and, and startup doesn't, startup has to be in a really right idea. And that's what really, really picks up, right? Right. If you have the right idea, and that's that is the, that is a startup which shows up there. There, I'm sure we don't uh, know it, but I think thousands of startups they start and fail because the ideas were not right, or somebody just wanted to give the money, or they weren't start. But if so, for example, even in the energy sector now, right, in power system, if there are startups like uh, who wants to really. Uh, <clears throat> come up with a way to monitor and measure the power system usage in each and every home, right? And a lot of things are being done in the United States like that, where I, there's nobody walks into my house to do the meter measurement, electrical meter measurement, but they basically do it through, through the online, right? So it's a Wi-Fi controlled. Uh, so similarly, the startups, but this like then this need a big infrastructure to do all that. So if somebody comes up with an idea, how can they really be done locally and managed locally, right? Those those kind of ideas, which are really the startup, which really solves right away, that probably would really uh, help. I think that's those are the, those kind of startups which should really look at if you really want to join startup. Yes, yeah, so surely startup is really good idea for today's generation. So next question is that, Sir, what do you think about energy industry, or energy industry startups, and how they are impacting our overall development? What I really see now in uh, energy industry is, it's like a, uh, it's a, it's a if, if, I feel, if you take the analogy, like when I was studying in uh, IIT Kanpur in 1990, every, all the computers were what they, what they used to call it as a wide area network. Okay, there was not everyone had a computer at home or anything like that. Everything was connected to the wide area network. Then came the, the personal computers, and then wide area network were not that uh, uh, useful anymore, right? But then now came the cloud computing, right? So everybody really now everybody wants to have a dumb terminal at the home, and everything is done uh, uh, somewhere in a cloud. So it's it's like uh, going back to the same 1990s computing. Philosophy. Only difference is now instead of uh, limited to one area, uh, right? Now it is across the globe. Now you can be anywhere and you can do computing anywhere. Now exactly like that is happening in uh, electrical industry now. Power generations. For example, if you look at the the generations, right? When when now you still have a big generators, big nuclear power plants or big coal coal power plants, right? To generate the power, but now. Uh, I, I really doubt anybody really would like to build a nuclear power stations, but they would really like to build a lot more wind farms or a lot more photovoltaic generation plants. So now what they're really doing you, uh, uh, is, is even in uh, I, even I heard in uh, in India also that they want to then uh, basically if you want to build a photovoltaic plant right you need a lot of a lot of real estate a lot of space so and what they're really thinking is you could even have a floating uh, pv pv plants on a lake so not only it will you'll get a space it will reduce the the <clears throat> the reduce in the water right because of the <clears throat> so so what I really think is now we are going back to going back to personal use of uh, power systems. Basically, now I, I see lots of lots of places, lots of homes in uh, in Germany now they are self-contained. That means they generate their own electricity. They generate their own electricity through the uh, PVs and uh, okay. So yeah, you, and that uh, they don't really have enough uh, uh, sunlight. But here now in like places like India, like I'm sure there will be a lot of scope of uh, installing a lot of PV panels, right? And then you can really be self-contained and we don't really have to rely on the, the, the electricity market. So that's my, my case is that's what really we are driving. And I think basically we are going back to uh, 
uh, not concentrating generation at one place, but generating where it is needed. So in through the smaller smaller uh, power generations, wind farms or PVs, and even the geothermal uh, geothermal plants, lots of lots of things. Absolutely, sir. Uh, as you said, uh, they are really very really important for our uh, development. Uh, so, sir, moving on to the, our next question. You did your graduation in India uh, and then you did your PhD in abroad. So, we would really like to know uh, that uh, what are your views on education system in India uh, and abroad? There are, I'm definitely like, uh, uh, like, uh, a lot of differences between the education system in India and education system in the uh, United States. Not to run, probably, and this, that is true to any other country. Uh, it's, uh, education system is different in their own way. Uh, uh, for example, uh, even even at this stage in years, right? My daughter is who's who is in tenth grade now, right? She just finished tenth grade. But then, if you, if you look at the the, the amount of uh, subjects she studied. And the vastness of those subjects is it's a lot more than I studied even in college, really. Like that's so that's really the difference it starts. Not only that, the the content is very different. Our content is very high standard. Uh, the amount of choices you have. So, for example, there are even in uh, like right from the elementary school, which is primary school in India. You could choose different subjects based upon your abilities. If somebody is really doing a really good in math and science, they can take a higher higher level courses. So there are some kids uh, in even in high school here who take the college level math courses or college level science science courses. So there is so availability of uh, resources or availability of uh, courses like that. It is there. So that's how that's another that's a big difference. And even in uh, when you when you go to like for example you go to you know karat and you do electrical engineering right for example you decided to do electric so there are certain set subjects specified for you 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 have to finish right you, that's what your curriculum is but it's in uh, in uh, mostly in the united states or probably in, even in other other state other parts of the world is yeah, there are core courses, what they call the core courses. So if you are an electrical engineer, you want to become electrical, or you want to become IT person, right? So these are minimum uh, courses you have to finish in order to get that major degree. However, there are remaining, like say, you, you need eight credits or eight courses with uh, your core uh, core subject in electrical engineering or computer science, but remaining eight courses, for example, you could choose anything you want. That's that's mostly it is done. So it's not really like when I was I was in Karad basically I had to do a fluid mechanics right I had to do the thermodynamics those are the, the those are the courses they were mandatory but here if, if in uh, in the United States at least we if you go to college like that you could theoretically take the course in uh, in music if the if the college has a music department. You can take a, a course in the music department if you are interested in, even though you are doing engineering. So even though you are, even though you are doing engineering, you could take courses in biology. So that's those those are really uh, differences. And but one one thing you do, you have to really remember is this: it doesn't matter where you where you where you go, right, or where you learn. Ohm's law stays the same. Even in India, or even in any any school, and even in Harvard. So, all the principles you will learn in electrical engineering in Karar are the principles you will learn in any other university will be the exactly same. Okay. Only difference would be how hard or how dedicated you are to learning those principles and how good you are at using those principles. Okay. That will really differentiate you from. Uh, what you do and what others do, right? So that that is what I have really seen in my 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 education. So I came from a Marathi Marathi background and I did all these things in English. I did engineering everything, but I never really felt that I really do not understand something which 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 I have already studied. So all the things which Professor Khobragare taught me in in uh, Karad, I still use them. So that that's so those are so those principles will never go never go. Yes, there will be differences how how they get taught, right? 
every teacher, every professor is different. The same subject will be taught by two different professors. So the reception from the students will be different. So exactly like that. So courses start in uh, different universities will be different, right? But the principles stay the same. So as long as you really are, you are trying to understand what you're learning, okay? Irrespective of who, who is teaching or where you are learning that, right? So they will stay with you. And that's, that's how we really have to be look at this as a more holistic approach like thinking that uh, the, uh, I, I have seen people even the uh, students or like i've seen some some people who are studied in harvard which is one of the best schools right but i mean i'm but the the knowledge how in those the my core subjects and their knowledge is almost same so that's so that's the difference that's how you have to look at it so irrespective of where you learn you have to really learn it really well. Okay, that that is the bottom line. Yes, really. Thank you for your guidance. So, moving to the next question, as we all know the current scenario of engineering colleges. So, what what do you think about it, and what do you what would you recommend for them to improve? I would. I would like. I would. I would. Uh, uh definitely think of uh, uh, adding uh, like kind of uh, what what they call it as uh, internships so basically students go like uh, colleges should really allow students to go and work uh like say for one term okay so they go and work in uh, they find a job they go and work in a one term so they, they take a break and they go and do something else if, and uh, something in their related uh, so that will that will be really good improvement and students basically are like you have the, the breaks of making available the, the the local companies coming to the campus and making the opportunities available for students like you as a student really you are not demanding high pay job right you are basically demanding a, you are basically like taking a job which basically you will be doing equally good than any other person would do but and then in the in turn the company gets job done and then you get to learn something right so that probably would approach a lot of the universities follow here okay so they most of the people most of the students they go and work okay during the during the summer months or they, sometimes when they take a break and they they that, and that is possible because it is it is okay to uh, but those jobs are available that's one thing i think having having a job or having some kind of experience while you are still studying that would be good and also allowing basically more charges to the, the courses of students interest like taking the core courses and then maybe making some optional courses now that probably like uh, when i see the, the your college number of departments available and department courses so there is there is there is easily possible now to allow students to take courses from like electric engineer student taking courses in it right for example so that that is that is doable and that is possible so that's that probably would one way to improve or broaden the knowledge of a student right like so you are not just compartmentalized just in one subject you know and plus bringing the real life examples, like when you are probably doing a power system analysis, like not just studying just the limited scope, but really bringing and uh, doing some real, uh, real life studies as well. That, that will really, really help. That's what they call it as a Capcom project in the United States. So they basically, all students, they really do some, some kind of projects with some industry to come up with something, some solution, and they present that. So that those kind of, will improve the students uh, knowledge their inclination to study or their basically expertise in knowing the subject yeah absolutely sir uh, thank you so much for your suggestions uh, they are really good uh, so sir uh, we all have a lot of new experiences uh, and learn a lot of things in our college days so we would be very happy to know that what was the most beneficial thing that you learned or uh, experienced in your GCK? What, what are the questions? Uh, what was the most beneficial thing that you learned or experienced uh, in GCK? Oh, true friends, lots of friends. I really, and I still remember them. I still have, I mean, if it, 
why do you really go to college? Yes, education is one thing, right? Education is really one of the main thing, right? Plus you really meet lots of new people, there are lots of friends you acquire for the whole life and that makes, makes your life full, also happy. If you, if you are really a really person like that. And in, in Karan definitely had a really good, good memories. For example, I, I mean, I, I, how, how selfless you need to be. For example, when we, when I went to Karan for the first, uh, for, in, uh, for the, like uh, joining the college, right? We stayed with a family. And even though that family was not kind of a rich, or I wouldn't say that it's real rich, but they paid me for almost like a few months without really asking any money. I mean, that kind of true selflessness, right? So that is really like, and that really get to know from people when you leave. And so the, I, I have seen a lot of such a kind hearted people, met a lot of good hearted people like everywhere I have gone to in the entire my life. And that's, that's, I'm really fortunate for that. That's, that's, that's really good, uh, good uh, <clears throat> memory that I have of Karan. A lot of, and as I said in my earlier questions, I, the thing which I learned in Karar, I still use them. So it's not really like I don't really, uh, even though I have learned a lot of new stuff, but I still the basic thing which I did there, they, I still use them. So though, those were good and those professors were good and what they taught were really good. So, so pay attention to your teachers and pay attention to what you're learning. That's really important. Oh, yes, sir. Surely. Thank you, sir, for sharing our amazing experience. So moving to the next question, we all are fascinated by foreign life. So how will you describe your experience as a student in Canada and USA? If as, as a, I mean, yes, experience in, it's a, I mean, once, once you come to a place, new place, you will see the changes, and then you they will you will definitely see the differences between the places. And once once that once that settles down, right, then basically it's the same same grinding, right? You if you are in a college, you basically work hard to to finish what you are doing, right? That's that's thing. <clears throat> Another really very very interesting cultural things, right? Between when you when you when I see here and. Uh, US are, are from India, right? So for example, <clears throat> I never used to say, like so somebody uh, asked me, how are you? I have, to, I, when I, then I'll say I'm, I'm okay or I'm fine, I'm being good, all that stuff, right? But I never used to ask, how are you doing? Thank you, how are you? I never used to ask that, but that is one of the etiquette, you have to always say that. So that's what one of my professors said that, okay, if somebody asks you, how are you? I yes, say that, you answer that question, says I'm really doing fine and say thank you and then ask that question to him too right how are you doing so that so though so but that I never learned that in India but that's that's how that's how things work for example another thing is I really it's, it's very minute but really very very differentiates between how people behave differently which is when in 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 the US or Canada if you, if you go to open any door right and somebody is just following you you don't open the door and you go in. You basically open the door and the other person who is following you to let him in first, and then you go in. That's that's how it is, and that's how that's how. It, so those are the things which which are very really like very minute but very different from uh, from how people behave or how people live, and that's so. Again, in uh, the studying in uh, in uh, in the universities in our in Karad or specifically lecturer will come and teach you, right? It's exact same. It's really, yes, the tools may be different, the subject will be different, but it's identical. So, so other than that, what you learn is still the same. So it's the professor maybe being very experienced, very knowledgeable, he will be really good. He can really give a really good examples so that he can, he, the subject can sink in uh, very easily. Okay, <clears throat> so, so, my, I definitely had a really good, good experience. I mean, all colleges, I really had a good experience in Karad. I did have a good experience in Kanpur. I did have a really good experience in London. I, and and I, all the places I went, I did really have a good friends and we have kept our friendship still, still on basically. So that's, 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 that's what, uh, that's what it counts. 
yeah so surely as you said that your hard work is a path to success and we can see that your hard work is uh, really great and it is uh, surely it surely benefits all all the students so moving on onwards uh, sir uh, going abroad and doing our masters is a dream for a lot of students so we would be very happy to know that uh, what are your suggestions for the students uh, who want to do their masters in abroad I would, it's, a, it's, a, it's a definitely it's a good it's a good uh, uh, good option if you have the uh, means to do it because I think I am not really sure now but I I seen lots of uh, lots of Indian students coming and really doing masters so if you really if you're really interested it's definitely is a good a good thing uh, if you have the ability to come or do it it's good one thing is. Uh, Earlier, there were not like at like my time. There were still lot less students coming and lot less opportunities. But now I think there are really lots. And if you really are interested, it's definitely it's a good it's a good choice. And even probably I think I've seen, uh, for example, even in my company where I work, I've seen some students, Indian students, coming and studying. And they basically even took the education loan and they came. And then once you get a good uh, good job. Hopefully, uh, after that, you can work for three years in the United States. That's what, uh, once you do any degree, that's what they allow you to work. With, uh, with the, they give you, they basically have eligible to have a visa, and then you can work for three years. And hopefully, if you're good, you can definitely find a job and you can, you can. So that's, that's, it's a, it's a good choice if you're really interested. But again, this is based upon what you have done. It's all, all comes down to how, what you have achieved so far in your college, right? So if you are really done good and if you really have, if you really have a willingness to uh, come and do even further studies, it, it is a good choice. But only thing is, I, I wouldn't suggest that uh, going to schools who are just there just to, just to make money or making a right choice, okay? Right choice is really important, like uh, are, are doing a, or doing a degree or coming for a graduation in a core core courses. So for example, core degrees really, which are really valuable and very important at this point. So, so for example, lots of lots of jobs in power systems here now, power, 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 lots of jobs in IT. So things like that. But if you if you <clears throat> if you want to come, basically make definitely make sure that uh, university is it's uh, legitimate because there are some universities here in United States too. They are just open to for make money. Okay, so so make sure that you really do your research to know the school really well, and then uh, once you know the school well, and then you decide to come, then make sure that you chose the the discipline you want to work in, right? Which is really the right one. Uh, look look for the uh, job or what are what are the scopes available in that area you want to work in. That that is because you don't want to come here with pay so much, lots of money, and then not uh, have a good education, right? For that money, so make sure that you you do that. Yes, sir, definitely. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for suggestion. Definitely, it will help us. So moving to the next question, considering the up upcoming era, electrical vehicles, uh, era of electrical vehicles. So what extra skill or knowledge as an electrical in engineer should learn? Uh, I, I think uh, electrical vehicles, what that really means is, right? We are basically, we are, we are putting a lot more uh, uh, demand on, uh, on the generation, right? So, so somebody, if you want to charge a vehicle, somewhere, somewhere it has to produce that power. So that's when basically, uh, I, I would I would suggest that I would I would think that a lot more demand for electricity demand anyway is growing because of a lot of other devices being used, right? So the generation as as an electrical engineer, like you 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 really become good at uh, let's say uh, core core electrical engineering principles like power systems or electric machines and things like that. Those those. Those are will be helpful, and for as an as an engineer, really like there is a lot of uh, lot of technology goes in the charger, right? If you, you know, see if we can even diversify, not just like uh, 
bringing into that, but like uh, uh, if you have uh, so many charging stations, so there is somebody building those machines are trying to maintain those, right? So what is what? Uh, how to make them efficient? Those kind of technologies, what if you can work in those, that will be really good, right? So because this, those are the fields which are going to be in demand. Yeah, yeah, sir. Great, sir. So, uh, so, sir, uh, today, looking at today's generation or uh, situation, uh, the IT sector is very growing. Uh, so, what will you advise for the electrical engineering students to match up there? IT sector, yes, definitely is growing. But even I think IT sector is growing because like a lot of things are really uh, converted and be done in that, right? So, similarly. There is, there is a lot of things you can still, as an electrical engineer, you can do in, even in, uh, like you, you can still do a lot of programming, but related to power engineering. So I personally, for example, right, I, I'm an electrical engineer, but what I really don't go and use any tools or do anything. But I really do a lot of uh, thinking and designing and uh, programming how things work, right? I do a lot, a lot of research to make that work. So things like that, even, even those are, useful for example if you go to uh, load dispatch centers in india and if you see all those a lot of engineers doing what they call a lot of continuous analysis like i think uh, i just uh, saw a post of uh, some time back uh, that uh, in uh, i think last december or something there was a outage in mumbai because of uh, 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 one of the 400 kv line coming from the Chandrapurgi were tripped and then there's an adjacent 400 kV line tripped and they basically never studied the contingencies what could really happen so knowledge like that is really important now like I, because there's so many uh, so many things are connected and so much demand right you really want to make sure that you you study all the possible uh, avenues of uh, something going bad what are the what are uh, what are the remedial actions one can take right in order to study that, right? So if you if you know the uh, power power system background and you really learn things topics like that, like uh, really power system planning, that's where the power system planning starts. So those will be really good uh, to to learn in electrical engineering, really doing the, the kind of uh, system studies level. So you are really not looking at one transformer, right? You are looking at uh, the holistic uh, as a, at a system level, how things work. And if something goes bad, what what are the things? What are the actions you can take to uh, keep the system uh, function you are performing or working? Yes, sir. Definitely, your advice definitely will help us as an electrical engineer. So, next question is that: What do you think about Tesla? Will any Indian company bid Tesla in e-vehicles, and why? Probably not, because uh, 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 the re I think the it's a, it's a, it's a, these are really high end, high tech vehicles, right? So, for example, it takes personally, I don't like Tesla uh, vehicles because uh, they rely too much on machine. They really have no fail safe mechanism in a lot of lot of times. For example, just like the a uh, few weeks back, I heard a story about um, Tesla vehicle getting uh, basically uh, batteries basically uh, is burning, but and because of batteries burning, that uh, its electronic system is failed and really the the driver inside couldn't get out because it is locked. Okay, so it's too much electronics is not good too. So uh, so so besides that. I mean, yes, there's a lot of technology, a lot of advancement, a lot of machine learning, right, is, is being done into that. So, so I'm sure there are, I'm sure a lot of Indian companies have worked behind the scene with, uh, to really make that technology possible too. I'm sure a lot of electrical engineers from India really working on those, 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 those things. And so personally, I don't, I'm not really sure whether really any Indian company can really take on Tesla and go ahead only because uh, advancement of technology is really need, right? That the kind of knowledge you need to succeed. So that it takes, it's a long time to really come to that point. That's basically it. So it's not like they can't really do it, but it really takes time to really 
come up, I'm sure they have already done thousands of experiments before really coming up with a solution, right? So you, so if you want to do it, you have to do the same thing, right? So that's why, that's why, yes, maybe eventually, yeah, it will come. The Indian company can succeed, but right now, I don't really think that that is even possible. So even, even the, all the car, car manufacturers, right? Uh, even in the US really, I mean, they are good. Like there are a lot of, uh, 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 for example, General Motors is investing $25 billion uh, in uh, electrical vehicle manufacturing. So they are really like, even some of the competitors for Tesla, they are really coming right here. So it's like, uh, and they will be here. And th those cars are really good. Those cars are really good, so. Yeah, so absolutely, we have really a long way to go, but we can definitely try as hard as possible to match that level. Uh, so, sir, uh, moving on to the next question. So, we all are uh, in a home for a long time now. So, how you look on pandemic uh, as an opportunity, or what you have done in pandemic in home? Oh. Uh. I understand your question, right? You, what I have done during pandemic, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So, as like as like the whole world stopped for us to on 13 March 2020. So that was the last day I went to the office, 13 March 2020. And since then we are working from home. I did go to the office just few times, maybe just two or three times. I just went and came came back just to get some books. I went there. Uh, so we are working from home, but fortunately for us, we do a lot of our work on a computer and a lot of work uh, teaching or talking or discussing a lot of things basically done via computer. So it, as work is really not affected at all, probably are done, we are done even more work because we don't really have anywhere to go. So basically, if you, are, if you are getting bored or you need to do something or you are solving a problem and you are really not found a solution yet, your computer is next to you. So you go and try something else, right? So that's so so that's from work front. Work front, I think, as a Siemens, we did pretty good actually. And as a, as a, as a, as a as our group, we did we did good and we 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 have been really very successful uh, because of. Uh, Available technology and we're able to communicate and uh, do a lot of stuff. And so, for example, right, uh, the, we we write programs, right, to do some stuff in power system. So, but now, in order to write generate that program itself, we write another program so that we can really mass produce the program. So, we do a lot of innovations like that, so that one person job basically like 20% uh, people job is done by one, just one program, that's it. So that's, I, I've done some programs like that in, uh, in Siemens where we, where I work, where like we used to take uh, weeks of time to do something. Now it is just a click of a button. That's how, that's how efficient we have, we have become during the pandemic. So really done a lot of, a lot of good stuff like that. And as a, as a work front, uh, we really not affected, but unfortunately, a lot of people cannot say that. And in, even in the United States, a lot of uh, service industry, for example, restaurants are closed, or lots of uh, lots of people who work in the service industry, those those really really affected. And here in where I live, right, that's uh, it's a small small town, really small town, like and really a lot of open space, open space between houses, open space, the really big streets, long open streets, and not much population. So even, uh, even height of pandemic also, we were not really locked down. We, we were advised, uh, basically we can't really go anywhere and, and lots of shops were closed and uh, things like that, our hotels were closed, but we could really go out and walk in my neighborhood, right? So we really did a lot of walking. We did hiking and we did a lot of biking. So that uh, fortunately for us, pandemic personally uh, in my family for us has really not affected at all, but unfortunately that's not for a lot of people. Uh, so yes, we are working from home and and we all three of us basically at the same, uh, my daughter basically went to school whole year but uh, the, the way they did school was 
uh, two days, uh, 50 percent, and two days, 50 percent, and one day they kept to basically sanitize the work. So fortunately, that really worked. So they and they were wearing masks whole time when they're inside school. So they could go 50 percent, and they work. And we did really a lot of walks and uh, everything. Everything really worked for me personally, or for my family. Fortunately, it's really, really not affected that much by pandemic, other than. I was to visit my family in India in last September, and I couldn't go yet. Yes, sir. So next question is that uh, as a student, engineering student, they are looking for preparing for different examinations. So what? how did you prepare for different examinations during your college time along with co-curriculum co activities? Hard work. Right. So you, you, so that that is. So how how do you differentiate yourself from somebody else? Right. The only way you can differentiate you from somebody else is uh, either you're really like a God-given genius, so they don't really have to study much, right? Or you really work hard to 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 make that happen. So we did study for. Uh, I mean, I didn't really personally study a lot of uh, other exams other than really preparing for a gate when I was I was in the final year of engineering. So I'm, sh I'm sure uh, some of the exams you are really want to take, they probably can be really uh, uh, achieved or successfully done, like by just preparing a few hours of a day in a, in a, in a, when you are on a break or something like that. Maybe depending upon what kind of exam you want to do, really maybe you have to take a break and if really that determined I really want to be go for it. I mean, I, I and if you have like a family support and there are no responsibilities, I would recommend you go for it because at least at that point, it's you will have, you will not have a regret, right? You were successful or not successful, but at least you have tried. You have given your best, and that's 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 what it counts, right? At the end, you will not see the oh, I I wish I tried that. No, that 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 regret will not be there. So I would suggest that if you are, I'm, I'm sure if you are like preparing any engineering exam, for example, if you are preparing an uh, Indian Railways exam, which is more like a engineering or more like a common math and things like that, that those probably you can really ace when you are uh, doing engineering, but a little more extra effort. I'm sure your professor is not giving to, going to give you the work that you really involves 24 hours of your time, right? So you still can find time to to do the other 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 studies. But one of the really important thing, if you really want to do something like that, is is planning. If, if you, unless you write it down, that never happens. Okay. So if you really want to do something, you really have to log it. You have to really log it. And really, unless unless you write exactly what you are doing and how, if you, even if you decide, oh, I want to study two hours for something. But unless you really log it and find out, are you really doing it? Because if you go and study for some time, like, oh, so I studied for that today, you know, but unless you really know exactly how much you studied or what you studied, you will never know how efficient or how good you are, okay? So try to keep a keep a log of what really you want to achieve and how you are trying to make that happen. Okay? And then after, uh, after you realize, oh, my efforts are really less or I'm really doing good, you know? You can really, and then beside, based upon that, you can determine what what are your priorities and what exactly you should really reduce if you are not getting enough time to study, right? If you are going partying all the time, then you basically not, you have to stop that and study, right? Thank you so much, sir, for all, all your answers. So now uh, we can start the student interaction. Uh, so, uh, attendees, please put your question in the chat box. Arpita? Uh, so, uh, here is one question, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. from okay. uh, electrical vehicles are really useful for humans and environment. But still, uh, there are some rumors about like electric vehicles have limited range. They are not convenient. They are exp expensive, etc. So, uh, sir, can you please tell us it is actually true or they are just rumors? 
Oh, uh, electric vehicles are expensive because of the cost of a battery. Okay, that, and that is true. So if you if you buy a bat if you buy a vehicle uh, which gives basically similar uh, uh, mileage, right? So that is much cheaper than electrical vehicles. That's because of the cost of a battery, and the cost of batteries is substantially going down because of the government subsidies and the the lot of environmental regulations or a lot of competition and the the, the, uh, the innovations done in battery manufacturing and. Another really thing which is which is not yet liked in electrical vehicles is uh, because of how far they can go, right? If you have a battery and if you can go only 200 miles, that probably, if you, are, if, you, if you just use that vehicle to go to your office and come back, which is like say 20 kilometers every day, then it is fine. But if you, if you have only one vehicle, at least in the United States, I really cannot go anywhere without my car. There's no public transport, right? I have to have a I have to have a car to go anywhere to go. So, and if I have to go some other cities, which is like 100 and 200 miles away, I I unless that electrical vehicle has that much that many mileage, I cannot really have that vehicle. That's that's the bottom line because you cannot wait on a gas station for eight hours to charge your battery, right? You can fill the gas and then go in the, uh, 10 minutes, but you cannot wait for eight hours to fill. So. I, I'm sure that technologies are improving both manufacturing and like there are fast chargers also now, like which can they they claim that you can really charge your battery within like a few hours, which is which is which is good. And then uh, for even I think Tesla is also can go up to 100, 350 miles. So there are vehicles which are going all the way up to 350 miles. So which is which is which is good. Electric vehicles are definitely good because it it does reduce a lot of pollution. And not only that, you as a user, electrical vehicles will have a lot less maintenance, right? But so there's no there's no lubrication to that, okay, other than some transmission lubrication, right? But like there's no engine lubrication and a lot of other all those maintenance costs because of that would go on away. But then you bat I depending upon the battery life, right? If your battery life is only seven years, then you basically have another ten thousand dollars you need to uh, pay for the battery too. So uh, all those things will really uh, come into play. So our electrical electrical vehicles are good. They're definitely good, but depending upon uh, your use, you have to really decide whether that is the, that is the vehicle which can meet your needs. But the gas in uh, uh, the petrol in India is more expensive than in uh, than in United States. So, but and in India probably a lot a lot of not a lot of people really go Kolhapur to Pune every day, right? So that is far. But then you could you could really uh, just using the vehicle to go for the office, which is like say 20 kilometers, and then you can come home and you can charge, and you have a reliable uh, power supply so that you can charge. Then all oh, that's a really good good solution, right? Even though maybe it costs a little more now, but it is good. Yeah, uh, absolutely, sir. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so, sir, uh, next question is from Kartikeya. Uh, which courses should we uh, we should do as an electrical engineer as far as recent market conditions are concerned? What was that? Which courses? What was the question? Which which are courses we should do as an electrical engineer as far as recent market conditions are con concerned? Oh, what are the electrical engineering courses you can do? Yes, oh, but where where do you want to do this course? You mean courses in a school or college or outside? Or, I mean, I I would I would say I think there's a there's I'm sure there will be a lot of demand for electrical engineers in uh, in uh, uh, installing PV fans, for example. What are the innovative? So it's not only going and installing the. TV panel, but what kind of improvements you're going to bring the installation? That's what you as an electrical engineer have to think through like that. Okay? So it's not like, a, oh, I do not, you do not need an electrical engineer to install a PV, a PV panel. Yes, that is true. But when you start installing, that's when you, you will really learn 
what are the what are the things which you can improve upon right without knowing that that you wouldn't know it so those those are like learning about wind farms for example right what are what are what are the effects of wind farm or how when you connect to the power grid what are the things you need to consider when you do that or when you do the power system planning like right? that's that those kind of i'm sure there are a lot of uh, market for that, those kind of uh, those kind of uh, jobs uh, sir, actually, he's asking about online courses. Which online courses we should do? Oh, online courses? Hmm. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I, I mean, I've been. Okay, Arpita, please continue. Okay. The next question from Akash Bawar How would we approach a disagreement with other electrical engineer or other branches regarding the best approach? for solving a problem at an industry level in this era it is the same same approach you have to take how you solve the disagreements between family members right if you don't agree with your father what do you do if you don't uh, father's approach and your approach what do you do if you don't like what do you do right i mean the best solution should prevail right irrespective of your background or your your opinion, right? You being an engineer, you really have to hold science to the fact, right? Science as a, as a fact. And if, if you think or you can prove somebody else is saying wrong, right? And yours is a better solution. That's how that's how the disagreement should should be resolved, right? I mean, that's I. So science is not an opinion. Science is a fact, right? Engineering is not an opinion. Engineering is a fact. So as long as you can prove yourself. That somebody else is not right, then they should right. Then that then they should accept your solution. I would I would say that's how that's how we will really solve that. Uh, and you see, even and to solve a problem, there's not one unique solution, right? Uh, for to solve the same problem, there could be many many solutions too, right? So when you when you come to a different solutions, now if you want to sell it. How much it really costs, right? So solution one, how much it costs? Solution two, how much it costs, right? So when you, yes, science, you come first, uh, come with solution, with a technical solution, and then then look at that economical uh, solution, right? How does it really affect, and how how will that solution be taken up, right? That's those are the those are the things you would need to discuss or resolve. To really come up or come out a conclusion. So if, if you come up with a really, really, really good technical solution for a problem, but that really, really, really costs a lot of money, right? Then that's no good solution too, right? But then if you come a come a solution, technical solution which is not really the best, but it it really solves the problem and it costs little, costs really less, then I would really go for that, right? That's so not only one aspect you will really look into the resolving anything is this many aspects of the problem one is engineering one is the uh, economic and what is the are, are and you want to be found okay you want to be fine that okay it's really cheap to build and but is it really implementable right you want to even look at that too right so in, when you find a solution you really have to be able to implement it too and can it really do it so those those are the things you will and that's how you really have to come to a conclusion which solution would be good and which solution should be uh, uh, which should, which solutions should be agreed upon and that's what that's what we do all the time like when we when we solve our anything in uh, in our program right i'm sure we there are many ways you can write the same code right if, as if you are writing up any uh, in a any program right any language that's how you do right you can do the same thing in many different ways but what we what we decide upon now like when you write a program right the way we decide upon is can this can this cone be self-maintained like without really if i make changes somewhere else do i have to really go and change this piece of code if i don't then it is good solution right and now when when you do a, like a distributed computing can this distributed it will work in all the distributed computing uh, framework too right can it work and, and if all that is true and how fast it really works like even uh, micro ma microseconds uh, means something right so is it really works fast so that's how basically 
you solve the problem. That's that's how all aspects of the problem need to be taken and then resolved. Yeah. So, so thank you, have you so to take much. politics out of the question first. Yeah, so, so, my so. my discipline is better than your discipline. That's that's not the way to solve it. Yeah. So, thank you so much for your all answers and thank you attendees for your questions. So now we can move further to teachers' interaction. Uh, so uh, I request Dr. S. K. Patil sir to share their views and ask any question if we have. S. K. Patil sir. Hello. I think uh, S. K. Patil sir have any. Any problem? So uh, we can move further with uh, Umarwad sir. Umarwad sir, please share your experience and views. Yeah, yeah. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, so, uh, the last time when you are visited uh, to our campus. In the, are not in I visited, I think, 2018. 18, okay. I, I was there just briefly for an hour or so, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Campus is very uh, pleasant right now. Uh, whatever you have uh, at your time, uh, 1989, oh, campus and academics uh, very improved. Okay. Facilities are uh, very increased. Okay. So you can. Uh, uh, Wi-Fi campus is there, uh, cashless campus is there, library facility increases there. Our library, uh, our library budget is one crore rupees per year. Okay, this is our library budget. Uh, we are spending a lot of things on the lot of uh, improvement uh, students. Training placement office also doing the well. This year we are uh, placed uh, 250, uh, more than 255 students out of 300 in the campus placement uh, that's very nice very nice yes sir. and uh, out of this one uh, student girl student uh, she got 25 lakhs cap package uh, in the um, uh, goldman sachs company okay. uh, these uh, things are uh, growing on uh, with uh, helping of uh, our uh, great uh, alumni like you okay, they are also putting their hands uh, to develop our institute so, Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, last time uh, um, in uh, IES, you know, IES, UPS examination is there in India. Mm -hmm. uh, IES, Indian Engineering Services. In this uh, examination in 2018, All India rank number one. Arshal Bosley is the uh, All India rank one from our institute. Okay. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Very good. Very good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, um, 2018 MPSC, Maharashtra Public Service Commission, topper student, one number rank, uh, same uh, our college students. Wow, that's very nice. Yeah, yeah. This type of uh, the student also nowadays uh, 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 going towards uh, competitive examinations. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, one student, we have IRS in, uh, in the finance department. He is a joint uh, <laughs> commissioner of uh, that uh, uh, finance department. Okay. So this way is in the industry, uh, but also in going to the in the government organizations. Okay, and uh, I in uh, uh, HPCL, BPCL, Bale. Okay, so Maharatna companies, Mini Ratna companies. Okay, these are the uh, Navratna companies. Students, uh, our students are there. Okay, in ISRO also we are, our students are there. In uh, DRDO, uh, student one Kasare is Kasare is there. Uh, Uttareshwar Kasare is working in the DRDO. Yes. Very good, very good. Students are going into the government organizations in like in the state government or central government or whatever. The international level also our students are there. But we, uh, due to communication gap, we cannot contact them. Or maybe they are not contact to us. Or So you, you have also our great uh, alumni, but we don't uh, know the information about uh, you. You are working in U.S. Uh, Dr. S.K. Patil is, uh, I thanks to S.K. Patil, sir, who who is uh, given this opportunity to contact you 
and we arrange uh, this uh, nice uh, session conversation between the students and uh, our distinguished alumni from the us who, who is working with a great uh, siemens company uh, which is the siemens is the one of the greatest company in the world so uh, thank you sir uh, for giving a nice uh, uh, lecture and conversation uh, uh, to the students uh, so very really interesting i learned uh, i am uh, listening your words right from uh, the first word to the last word up to the last word you have given a good uh, and whenever you come to the our uh, institute uh, please uh, meet us and we can arrange uh, some uh, physical interaction or uh, online interaction anything you want to do the uh, our institute for the students you can approach us thank you sir thank you thank you for providing me the opportunity to talk thank you krishna thank you uh, your turn sir uh, thank you sk padil sir for uh, giving the wonderful opportunity to contact uh, uh, dr krishna padil sir this is possible uh, because of you only you are told uh, yeah yeah one of our classmate is there uh, working in the us uh, in uh, siemens so that's why uh, with whole heartedly uh, i uh, i uh, thanks to uh, you sir padil sir to give open up to our students to introduce uh, such personalities sure yeah. krishna yes yes yeah uh, i i have one more request i will try to arrange your uh, lecture for electrical students especially in power system sure yeah if you could uh, spare time I, I will be in touch with you and we will arrange one lecture for students also electrical students yeah. especially that will be the technical lecture i will i will yeah, yeah. Uh, call yeah sure definitely Yes, and uh, today's lecture was uh, very inspiring and very, very, uh, very uh, enthusiastically given. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, yeah, thank you for the opportunity, yeah. For accepting our invitation. Yeah, from the behalf of the college, I, uh, I am very much thankful to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, you are, you are welcome. You are welcome. This. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, S.K. Patel, sir. And we are really looking for, forward for the power system lecture. Uh, and uh, thank you so much, sir, Patel, sir, for uh, your valuable time. It was really great talking and knowing your journey and experience. Uh, so uh, for now, uh, for the vote of thanks, I hand over to the Sumit. Uh, thank you, Arpita. Thank you, Amrita. Uh, good morning, sir. I am Sumit from SY Electrical. Uh, so today, uh, it's been very, give me the immense pleasure to give a vote of thanks from team Sinking GCK. Uh, so first I would like to thank you uh, to that you uh, spare your valuable time with us and uh, give your immense, uh, give your important uh, address that is relevant to that. And sir, I noticed uh, that you, uh, you know, you pointed out uh, very uh, three very uh, important key points. That is the, uh, you didn't wait for the perfect moment, but you took the moment and made it perfect. You to break, uh, you uh, taught us to break comfort zones and adopt new uh, things. Uh, and you also told us to that uh, education has not limit. Uh, it doesn't matter where you study and uh, how where you study, in which place you study, in which university you study. But it uh, matters that how you study and what you study. Uh, so and also your journey and your this event, your this uh, meeting uh, also proved that your uh, your whole journey is paved with lots of hard work. Thank you so much, sir. Again, I would like to thank our uh, honorable alumni, uh, honorable, uh, honorable, honorable uh, faculties, Dr. Eskapadi, sir, Dr. Kumar Bhatt, sir, for giving us and uh, for encouraging us to proceed this event. Sir, again, I thank to all participant students for being a part of such a uh, motivating, such a remarkable and uh, event. Uh, and finally, yet importantly, thank to Team Thinking GCK for arranging such a valuable event. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. It was really good. Keep up good work. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Krishna, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, we will do. Yeah. You can exit, sir. Yeah, you can exit. Yeah. Shubham, thank you. Thank you for arranging. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot for the session, sir. Yeah.
Yeah, That's thank you. Pleasure. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. For okay. Your time. Bye. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm leaving now. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 Okay. Bye. Bye. Patil sir, SK Patil sir. Hello. Yes, sir. SK